the Noah Methodist Church is happy to produce a lot of different content for the edification of Christ Church throughout the world. This daily segment that you're listening to right now corresponds with the Daily Bible Reading Challenge, which is hosted by Christ Church in Moscow, Idaho. If you want to download the list of readings that they publish for yourself or learn more about this challenge, this initiative, go to BibleReading.ChristKirk.com. I'm Jeffrey Rickman. I'm the pastor here in Nowata, and I read from the Berean Standard Bible, which you can also find at Berean.Bible. Consider subscribing to this podcast to be a part of this daily effort to grow in familiarity with and love of God's Holy Word. Let's dive in for today. Hey, y'all. This is episode 24 of the Bible Reading Challenge. I'm Jeffrey Rickman. I'm the preacher here at Noah Methodist Church, and I want my people to read the Bible, so I'm leading the way. I'm glad a number of people are on board. If this is your first time, welcome. Don't worry about going back. We're just going to go forward together. We're going to cover six chapters today, starting in Leviticus. We're at the beginning of Leviticus, chapter 1. Let's attend upon God's Word together. Leviticus 1. Then the Lord God called to Moses and spoke to him from the tent of meeting, saying, Speak to the Israelites and tell them, When any of you brings an offering to the Lord, you may bring as your offering an animal from the herd or the flock. If one's offering is a burnt offering from the herd, he is to present an unblemished male. He must bring it to the entrance to the tent of meeting for its acceptance before the Lord. He is to lay his hand on the head of the burnt offering so it can be accepted on his behalf to make atonement for him. And he shall slaughter the young bull before the Lord and Aaron's sons. The priests are to present the blood and sprinkle it on all sides of the altar at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Next, he is to skin the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. The sons of Aaron, the priest, shall put a fire on the altar and arrange wood on the fire. Then Aaron's sons, the priests, are to arrange the pieces, including the head and the fat, atop the burning wood on the altar. The entrails and legs must be washed with water, and the priest shall burn all of it on the altar as a burnt offering, an offering made by fire, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. If, however, one's offering is a burnt offering from the flock, from the sheep or goats, he is to present an unblemished male. He shall slaughter it on the north side of the altar before the Lord, and Aaron's sons, the priests, are to sprinkle its blood against the altar on all sides. He is to cut the animal into pieces, and the priest shall arrange them, including the head and fat, atop the burning wood that is on the altar. The entrails and legs must be washed with water, and the priest shall bring all of it and burn it on the altar. It is a burnt offering, an offering made by fire, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. If instead one's offering to the Lord is a burnt offering of birds, he is to present a turtle dove or a young pigeon. Then the priest shall bring it to the altar, twist off its head, and burn it on the altar. Its blood should be drained out on the side of the altar. And he is to remove the crop with its contents and throw it to the east side of the altar in the place for ashes. He shall tear it open by its wings without dividing the bird completely. And the priest is to burn it on the altar atop the burning wood. It is a burnt offering, an offering made by fire, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. Leviticus chapter 2. When anyone brings a grain offering to the Lord, his offering must consist of fine flour. He is to pour olive oil on it, put frankincense on it, and bring it to Aaron's sons, the priests. The priests, the priest shall take a handful of the flour and oil together with all the frankincense and burn this as a memorial portion on the altar, an offering made by fire a pleasing aroma to the Lord. 
The remainder of the grain offerings shall belong to Aaron and his sons. It is a most holy part of the offerings made by fire to the Lord. Now, if you bring an offering of grain baked in an oven, it must consist of fine flour, either unleavened cakes mixed with oil or unleavened wafers coated with oil. If your offering is a grain offering prepared on a griddle, it must be unleavened bread made of fine flour mixed with oil. Crumble it and pour oil on it. It is a grain offering. If your offering is a grain offering cooked in a pan, it must consist of fine flour with oil. When you bring to the Lord the grain offering made in any of these ways, it is to be presented to the priest, and he shall take it to the altar. The priest is to remove the memorial portion from the grain offering and burn it on the altar as an offering made by fire, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. But the remainder of the grain offering shall belong to Aaron and his sons. It is a most holy part of the offerings made by fire to the Lord. No grain offering that you present to the Lord may be made with leaven, for you are not to burn any leaven or honey as an offering made by fire to the Lord. You may bring them to the Lord as an offering of first fruits, but they are not to be offered on the altar as a pleasing aroma. And you shall season each of your grain offerings with salt. You must not leave the salt of the covenant of, of your God out of your grain offering. You are to add salt to each of your offerings. If you bring a grain offering of first fruits to the Lord, you shall offer crushed heads of new grain roasted on the fire. And you are to put oil and frankincense on it. It is a grain offering. The priest shall then burn the memorial portion of the crushed grain and the oil together with all its frankincense as an offering made by fire to the Lord. Leviticus chapter 3. If one's offering is a peace offering and he offers an animal from the herd, whether male or female, he must present it without blemish before the Lord. He is to lay his hand on the head of the offering and slaughter it at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Then Aaron's sons, the priests, shall sprinkle the blood on all sides of the altar. From the peace offering, he is to bring an offering made by fire to the Lord, the fat that covers the entrails, all the fat that is on them, both kidneys with the fat on them near the loins, and the lobe of the liver, which he is to remove with the kidneys. Then Aaron's sons are to burn it on the altar atop the burnt offering that is on the burning wood as an offering made by fire, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. If, however, one's peace offering to the Lord is from the flock, he must present a male or female without blemish. If he is presenting a lamb for his offering, he must present it before the Lord. He is to lay his hand on the head of his offering and slaughter it in front of the tent of meeting. Then Aaron's sons shall sprinkle its blood on all sides of the altar. And from the peace offering, he shall bring an offering made by fire to the Lord, consisting of its fat, the entire fat tail cut off close to the backbone, the fat that covers the entrails, all the fat that is on them, both kidneys with the fat on them near the loins and the lobe of the liver, which he is to remove from the kidneys. Then the priest is to burn them on the altar as food, an offering made by fire to the Lord. If one's offering is a goat, he is to present it before the Lord. He must lay his hand on its head and slaughter it in front of the tent of meeting. Then Aaron's sons shall sprinkle its blood on all sides of the altar. And from his offering he shall present an offering made by fire to the Lord, the fat that covers the entrails, all the fat that is on them, both kidneys with the fat on them near the loins, and the lobe of the liver which he is to remove with the kidneys. And then the priest is to burn the food on the altar as an offering made by fire, a pleasing aroma. All the fat is the Lord's. This is a permanent statute for the generations to come. Wherever you live, you must not eat any fat or any blood. Leviticus chapter 4. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to do as follows with one who sins unintentionally against any of the Lord's commandments and does what is forbidden by them. 
If the anointed priest sins, bringing guilt on the people, he must bring to the Lord a young bull without blemish as a sin offering for the sin he has committed. He must bring the bull to the entrance to the tent of meeting before the Lord, lay his hand on the bull's head, and slaughter it before the Lord. Then the anointed priest shall take some of the bull's blood and bring it into the tent of meeting. The priest is to dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle some of it seven times before the Lord in front of the veil of the sanctuary. The priest must then put some of the blood of, on the horns of the altar, a fragrant incense that is before the Lord in the tent of meeting, and he is to pour out the rest of the bull's blood at the base of the altar of burnt offering at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Then he shall remove all the fat from the bull of the sin offering, the fat that covers the entrails, all the fat that is on them, both kidneys with the fat on them near the loins and the lobe of the liver, which he is to remove with the kidneys, just as the fat is removed from the ox of the peace offering. Then the priest shall burn them on the altar of the burnt offering. But the hide of the bull and all of its flesh with its head and legs and its entrails and dung, all the rest of the bull, he must take outside the camp to a ceremonial clean place, for the ashes are poured out, and there he must burn it on a wood fire on the ash heap. Now, if the whole congregation of Israel strays unintentionally, and the matter escapes the notice of the assembly, so that they violate any of the Lord's commandments and incur guilt by doing what is forbidden, when they become aware of the sin they must have that they have committed, then the assembly must bring a young bull as a sin offering and present it before the tent of meeting. The elders of the congregation are to lay their hands on the bull's head before the Lord, and it shall be slaughtered before the Lord. Then the anointed priest is to bring some of the bull's blood into the tent of meeting, and he is to dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle it seven times before the Lord in front of the veil. He is also to put some of the blood on the horns of the altar that is before the Lord in the tent of meeting, and he must pour out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar of burnt offering at the entrance to the tent of meeting. And he is to remove all the fat from it and burn it on the altar. He shall offer this bull just as he did the bull for the sin offering. In this way, the priest will make an atonement on their behalf and they will be forgiven. Then he is to take the bull outside of the camp and burn it just as he burned the first bull. It is the sin offering for the assembly. When a leader sins unintentionally and does what is prohibited by any of the commandments of the Lord his God, he incurs guilt. When he becomes aware of the sin he has committed, he must bring an unblemished male goat as his offering. He is to lay his hand on the head of the goat and slaughter it at the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered before the Lord. It is a sin offering. Then the priest is to take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger, put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering, and pour out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. He must burn all its fat on the altar like the fat of the peace offerings. Thus the priest will make atonement for the man's that man's sin, and he will be forgiven. And if one of the common people sins unintentionally and does what is prohibited by any of the Lord's commandments, he incurs guilt. When he becomes aware of the sin he has committed, he must bring an unblemished female goat of his offering for that sin. He is to lay his hand on the head of the sin offering and slaughter it at the place of the burnt offering. Then the priest is to take some of its blood with his finger, put it on the horns of the altar burnt offering, and pour out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. Then he is to remove all the fat just as it is removed from the peace offering, and the priest is to burn it on the altar as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. In this way the priest will make atonement for him, and he will be forgiven. If, however, he brings a lamb as a sin offering, he must bring an unblemished female. And he, he is to lay his hand on the head of the sin offering and slaughter it as a sin offering at the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered. Then the priest is to take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger, put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering, and pour out the rest of its blood at the base of the altar. And he shall remove all the fat, just 
as the fat of the lamb is removed from the peace offerings. And he shall burn it on the altar along with the offerings made by fire to the Lord. In this way the priest will make atonement for him for the sin he has committed and he will be forgiven. All right, now going to the New Testament, this is Hebrews chapter 1. On many past occasions, and in many different ways, God spoke to our fathers through the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his nature, upholding all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So he became as far superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is excellent beyond theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have become your father, or again, I will be his father, and he will be my son. <clears throat> and again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. <clears throat> now about the angels, he says, He makes his angels winds, his servants flames of fire. But about the son, he says, Your throne, O God, endures forever and ever, and justice is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you above your companions with the oil of joy. And in the beginning, O Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will roll them up like a robe, like a garment. They will be changed, but you remain the same and your years will never end. Yet to which of the angels did God ever say, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are not the angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Hebrews chapter 2 Therefore, holy brothers, who share in the heavenly calling, set your focus on Jesus, the apostle and high priest whom we confess. He was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses was faithful in all God's house. For Jesus has been counted worthy of greater glory than Moses, just as the builder of a house has greater honor than the house itself. And every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything. Now Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's house, testifying to what would be spoken later. But Christ is faithful as the Son over God's house, and we are his house, if we hold firmly to our confidence and the hope of which we boast. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion in the day of testing in the wilderness, where your fathers tested and tried me, and for forty years saw my works. Therefore I was angry, with that generation, and I said, Their hearts are always going astray, and they have not known my ways. So I swore on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. See to it, brothers, that none of you has a wicked heart of unbelief that turns away from the living God. But exhort one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share in Christ if we hold firmly to the end the assurance we had at first. As it has been said, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. For who were the ones who heard and rebelled? Were they not all those Moses led out of Egypt? And with whom was God angry for forty years? Was it not those who sinned whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would never enter his rest. Was it not those who disobeyed? So we see that it was because of their unbelief that they were able to enter. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
I think it's a good move that they have us reading Hebrews alongside Leviticus. Leviticus is going to be all procedural Old Testament law. Hebrews is going to be the Old Testament law read through the Christ event. Hebrews is a beautiful book. If you haven't read it before, you should be excited. It's going to be really great. Leviticus is harder to appreciate, especially since we don't have a temple nowadays and it's describing something that, that hasn't been around for a while. But, you know, when they're talking about building a third temple, you kind of want to know how things are done. So uh, maybe you don't know that. There's a lot of interest. All these things have already been uh, built, and they're ready to build that third temple. I don't know what they're waiting on. It's crazy days we're living in. Anyway, that's the end of our readings for today. I think that'll be that. I uh, hope this has been a blessing to you. I'll see you tomorrow.